SmartX is the first DAX with a real solution to impermanent loss. SmartX is transforming the DeFi landscape, catering to liquidity providers and smart traders who want to benefit from low fees, farm DeFi highest APRs and trade effortlessly on SmartX.io. Good afternoon, everyone. BC Richard here coming to you live from London. It's just gone a minute past midday, making it just gone 1100 UTC. A big shout out to everybody making the stream live today. And obviously a big shout out also to everybody watching this on recording. See some beautiful, familiar faces in the chat as well. So good morning to all of you legends. It is awesome to be here. I'm feeling good. The market's pumping. But we're going to take a real quick look today at why that might be the case because obviously people getting really excited this morning a lot of people's different systems and bits and pieces have triggered um you know opening a lot of long positions coming in but as always we want to take our subjective view of the market we want to have a neutral stance we want to be able to see from a high time frame analysis where the high probability setups are let's look for where price is reaching for or where it's delivering from and let's see if we can get some setups ahead for the week so just first of all just like say a few good mornings to some wonderful people in the chat here erica h Obviously, always lovely to see you on here. Our wonderful Kelly Barker all the way from New Zealand as well. Nit Parr, great to see you on here, my friend. Hans, my man, hope you had a lovely weekend over there in South Africa. Expecting plenty of good grub on the braai and lots of cold beers for you guys. Um, Nit, my man, hope you are doing well. Whack, lovely to see you on here as well. Sambuca, 1977. Fantastic to see you back again, buddy. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Today, I really want to kind of pump the education side of things. I think BTC is going to give us a glorious opportunity to look at maybe how we could have looked to play this pump, how we could have looked to get involved. It's something that I missed personally because I don't trade on weekends. This is one of those outliers for me where we had this really big move. I was actually looking at the pre-market Asia session last night. Um, I do my I do a Bitcoin report for The Nest on a Sunday night, which I really like doing. Find it gets me kind of in tune with the markets. Sol Goodman. Hello, mate. Welcome. Um, and what it does is it kind of puts me in a really good frame of mind. So then when I get up Monday, I've got kind of a clear vision. Now, let's slap on our BTC chart quickly um, so we can look at this while we're discussing it. Obviously, sometimes that, you know, that goes against you. We had a really, really big move Sunday night. In terms of what we're looking at as a catalyst for that, well, I would be kind of... Um, looking towards something news driven, obviously the Asia market kind of waking up and looking to get involved. But obviously we're looking at all of this as pre-market um, in terms of when we're looking at uh, traditional market opens, right? We're looking at things like the equity markets, the Forex markets. Obviously we are in a situation there where, um, you know, this pump has kind of ripped really early. So what I would love to do is just take a look at that and we will kind of focus in on why that might be. We'll take a little bit of a closer look um, at the equity markets as well to see where we are. Yeah, and absolutely, I will. Trading views is giving me a little bit of jip at the moment, but let's just ping this over. I don't know if anybody else has been having issues with trading view for the last kind of week or so. Um just been getting a little bit freezy and we got told by kind of technical that there's probably a couple of bugs at the moment on the desktop but i don't really use the um i really don't use the the app actually maybe that's something i really really need to start to start doing let's see how this goes for us i think it's yeah it's playing ball with us now isn't it you see hello my friend Menho, my dear friend how are you good morning good morning craigie boy Hope you're doing well, mate, and we're not getting too much in the way of work. Um, working fine, you're in. Okay, awesome. And you, Sif, hello, mate. Uh, hi, time frame, please. Yeah, of course, brother. We will do that. Let's just, let's start with a nice fresh chart, shall we? I like starting with a fresh chart. Let's do, just get in our habit of just rolling our top down, yeah? So, <laughs> Biscuit, good morning, mate. I love this. This is brilliant. Yeah, I have trading view issues too. Price is not going where I want it to. <laughs> oh, HTF token, Yusuf. No problem, mate. Let's make, we'll try and make some time for that at the end. HTF. What are you trading that on, buddy? Is that on something a little bit more like um, 
Uh, is that sort of on anything more like a sushi swap, something like that? Or if you let me know which one it is, I'll make sure we get the right chart up. So I've still got these two lines on here, right? Now, uh, conceptually, the ideas of support and resistance, like I say, still make real sense to me as someone that was an original student of ICT. Um, obviously, he kind of conceptualizes that differently, but I was very fortunate to study under a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of fantastic traders, actually. And I think for me, it's all about how you conceptualize where the market is, where it's moving to. So basically, the idea of this is people would see this as a support and resistance line. Other people would see it as liquidity. Other people are looking at the candle bodies versus the wicks. For me, whether you want to call it a pivot point or what you want to call it, this is clearly a key area, right? We set this high. We didn't manage to close above it. Tried, tried, flat out rejections. We search for liquidity lower, right? Now, that's what I'm looking for. So in terms of if we're reclaiming a level, something like this, right? We've tried to go higher, tried to go higher. We've come down, taken liquidity from the lows. Now, let's remember what we're always asking ourselves the question of, right? Which is where, what is price doing? Where is it reaching for? What's it done? Where is it delivering from, right? So we've swept a key low down there. Yeah, so we can see we've swept a key low. So what's our story of price? First two questions. Have we taken liquidity above an old high or an old low? Yeah. And then we're asking ourselves where we're delivering from. And then we're looking for targets on where price can be reaching. So in this example, we're delivering from this weekly fair value gap. Price has swept this low. And the next most obvious target above it are those equal highs, right? So that's basically the thought process that we're going through. And we do that from our top down. So starting on the weekly to the daily to the four hour, and we move through like that. So we can see this was significant because we had this really strong move through here, right? Then there was the expectation. I was banging on about this for weeks and weeks, how, you know, it seemed likely to me that as we're coming up and engaging with this order block over here, that price would have a natural retracement down into this fair value gap, which we got. Now, the reason that I flipped bearish, I think a lot, sooner than other people is first of all i read the market in a slightly different way i'm not necessarily waiting for market structure i'm looking a lot more on the dynamics of where price is delivering from and also how price is reacting at key levels right so the thing for me is that when we got this we engage with this high this was the issue we started getting these long upside wicks now there's a load of liquidity resting above here so price really, in my opinion, should have really wanted to just blast up and take that out. However, there was obviously a lot of selling pressure. We're still within this order block. And look, this order block, let me just draw this in for you. Now I'm doing full wick to wick on this order block. And that's because for my system, or certainly how I look at it, uh, is that we're followed by a fair value gap, which first of all gives more weight to this. Yeah, we can also see there are a point of support here, these wicks coming down into an area that's supporting price. Then when we lose that, we can see price comes back up into this area and it sells off. We then re-engage with it here, which was quite a natural course to look at it pull back into this fair value gap down here. Then when we come back up into it again, we wanted to see, you know, we wanted to see this, maybe not necessarily this candle, but we wanted to see that type of strong move higher, right? A nice full body close up here, big bodied candle, small wicks, showing that there's a lot of volume, right, in that move. However, we, we kept getting these little rejections here, which showed weakness. And then when price really kind of failed to come back above this area, yeah, then we're looking in the other vein of, okay, well, what are our kind of closer order blocks doing here? Yeah. So obviously, if we're looking for down close candles to support price on the way up, means the down close candles are our bullish order blocks. So it's a little bit counterintuitive in the way that we then look for our up close candles as our bearish order blocks, right? Now, obviously, last up close candle that we had here, and I, because this wasn't followed by a fair value gap, I don't allow for the down part of the wick, right? But what I do want to see for validation is price closing below, yeah? So if I just zoom in a little bit here, and let me just tidy this up. We don't really need that on here anymore, do we? And we can get rid of this high as well. So we're within this order block right now. I've extended it down to that line because that's where the overall order block is. This is the part I'm most interested in in terms of looking at the reaction because it's only a small volume in the body there, but that to the up wick. Now, however, in terms of me having the confidence to then say, okay, well, I'm going to use this order block as an early sign of a structure shift or an early sign of a corrective move by price, then I want to see price close below. So from this point here, if we were to say, okay, if we were using it as like a vertical line type system, this would be the point at which we're bearish. Yeah, makes sense. So that's all we're going to do. We're just going to fly through the charts. We're going to look at that, starting with Bitcoin, and then any questions and bits and pieces you've got, we're going to look through those. So 
Um, I, Bitcoin report last night, I was saying how prices come down and we've taken out these lows, right? We also, as you can see, just dipped in, bearing in mind this is a weekly chart, so this is a fair while ago. We've also dipped into this pivot point or this support resistance area, right? Resistance, 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 yeah? Pulls back, takes liquidity, strong move above, yeah? This was the first retest of that level. And actually, it provided a really, really, really bullish reaction, right? We can see a big, long downside wick showing that as soon as we engage with that, you know, that was engagement of all of the buyers coming into their pushed price back up to here. Now, price did have kind of a secondary run of these levels down here, kind of left these beautiful untapped lows. Don't know if you guys can see that, but they're all just slightly higher than the previous one, meaning that they haven't been run. And what that means is you get this big build up, this big build up of liquidity here. Yeah. And then when it's run here, we can see that that ends up being the catalyst for driving price higher. Now, um, we are obviously drawing up into this fair value gap. So again, we're asking ourselves, what's price done? Where's it reaching for? So what's price done is run this low, it's engaged with a key high time frame support level. We can see the buy power setting in. Is that enough for us to become bullish? It's not, right? What I would look to do here, and the reason that we were looking for long setups here, is we're just counter trading the high time frame trend. Meaning that the assumption is that the price has taken liquidity and had a reaction, yeah? Then it's either searching for liquidity below an old low, which is what we had here, or an old high. If we've taken liquidity beyond the old low, price is then going to do one of two things. This is how I look at it anyway. Price is either going to look to rebalance a fair value gap, yeah? So get drawn up into here. These provide our draw, yeah? Then uh, if it conquers that, we close above here, then we start to look for the swing highs above, which then provide our next upside targets, okay? So where we are at the moment is that it allows us to get into some positions based on what liquidity is telling us. So the reason we can go long here, obviously on the lower time frames, is because we can decant that knowledge down. Yeah. So all we do now is we go down onto our daily and we say, okay, well, where's our weekly levels? Yeah. So we've got our high time frame levels. We can see the big part that this has played. Yeah. This is our weekly fair value gap that we marked up. Price took liquidity here, drew higher into this, yeah? Now, as we refine this down, we can see that this is also a daily fair value gap, yeah? So as price ran back up into up into here, it gave us a little hint because we had this FEG, which is bullish. So let me just do that in green for you guys so that stands out. Bullish FEG, our expectation was for price to draw into here, find some support and have continuation higher. However, we didn't get that, right? What we got is we got a strong bearish close below it, meaning that our expectation then is that price isn't finished in its search for liquidity. It's simply looking deeper. Where do we search to next? Well, we look for the clear and obvious low, yeah? So this one, right? Now, price set this low, we had a fairly bullish reaction that then led to this. Meaning to me that as I'm looking at this and then all of a sudden I look across here, see this and this forming these relative equal lows. Yeah. I'm then back to my point of thinking, OK, well, look at all the liquidity that rests below here. Price dips into this and catalyzes our bullish reaction away. So what does that mean for where price is at the moment? This, by the way, became an inverse fair value gap when we closed below it. I really, really love using those um, in terms of giving me a handle on when price is potentially going to make that move in the opposite direction. So where are we today? How could we have got involved in this move? Like I said, I miss this move because I don't trade at the weekends. However, we can always go back into the charts and make sure that we're aware of what we're doing. So if we're using our order blocks again, yeah, our down close candles, we need that to be closed above. So for ease, let's just mark up the whole candle. That way it represents the area that you want to see it closed above as well. When you see me mark up, not including the upside of the wick here, it's because there's no fair value gap after it. It also means I'm more interested in seeing what's happening when price is engaging with the body of the candle, right? Meaning that's where the largest volume of trading was done. Think about it like this. Wicks are where price has tried to get to. The bodies show you what it's actually achieved, yeah? Yeah. And then when you get situations like this, as SC always used to say, small body candles lead to big body candles. 
don't ignore the candles because even in this set here we see this last large white candle up and we start getting these small body black candles but look how many of them one two three four five until we get one uh uh, up candle again right which are white on my chart or typically we would say a green candle then we set an engulfing bearish candle and then we close below yeah so we bearish order block close below it this then gives us conviction here on that thursday to step into short trades okay so that's what we're looking for similarly over here we set this order block price came up haven't quite retested it not a problem but when that candle closed here yeah our assumption at worst is that from this candle, we're looking for, bearing in mind obviously it's closed here, we're looking for the obvious highs, which for, would have been that one first of all, yeah, that swing higher, and then to the next swing higher, which was over here on the left, and we can see we ran that yesterday, I believe, yeah. Okay, so using that same theory, we can refine this down using our order blocks, right? So what we're looking for here because we now want to focus on recency, is what happened when we had this shift. Here's our last up close candle. Again, we'll mark it from wick to wick because we need to know, um, because we want to know, sorry, when price closes below. We get our close below here, yeah? So where's our expectation? Price is going to run down this low, right? And then look to go lower or to rebalance a fair value gap. Now, I would have actually been aiming for this order block here, but we can see we didn't quite get down to there. Not a problem because we're looking to day trade these, so we still get our setups in here. But at the end of the day, if we're wrong, we're wrong. You know, you're going to have to get used to being wrong at least pff, 40, maybe 50% of the time with trading. Um, and when you do, it will, you know, it brings you a lot of peace and gets rid of a lot of anxiety. But you can only do that by having tried and tested methods and systems. That's why on a Monday, um, especially, I really like to focus on this education. And I feel sometimes like I'm kind of, you know, going over a lot of the same stuff again and again. But and, and if I am, please do let me know. But for me, it's so, so important to, you know, to find this kind of niche for yourselves and find this routine. So I find that running these top downs um, it is hopefully helpful, right? So... If we get rid of that here, as we were saying, when we came up here, we had our order block here, price went lower. Now, all we're doing then from here is we're looking for signs as to market recovery, yeah? So remember, we were in here, let me put that order block back in actually. Right, and this can be a good exercise sometimes, guys, if you wanna do it is, you know, when you're looking at bias and stuff like that to say to yourself, okay, Where's my bias changing? You can mark them up with vertical lines. So then when you go on to the lower time frames, you can have a visual point of reference as to what your high time frame bias should be. So close below this order block, yeah? Thinking that we now kind of purge deeper. We didn't get the deepest purge, but we did take out this low here, yeah? So that's mission accomplished because overall, we have gotta remember market structure and the fact that we're still looking bullish, okay? So then all we're saying to ourselves is, okay, if we're looking at this in an order block perspective, price is still delivering lower. Yeah. Now, like I said, we'd have been targeting this order block here. We didn't quite get there, but we have to say, OK, well, where's the market dynamic changing? Right. So I'm going to draw this one in straight away. So that was a originally a bearish fair value gap. So for continuation lower, our expectation is the price would drop down into here. Yeah. Draw back into this and reject and come lower. But it didn't. It did draw back into this and it tried to get above it, but it rejected. But when this candle here closed above it, my bias then flips back to bullish, all right, to push it higher. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that we can have here as well, which aligns the same, is if we're looking at this down close candle here, which is our bullish order block. This became validated on the very same candle because that is when price closed above this, yeah? So all of a sudden, we've got two really key bit of information now that we can take down onto our lower time frame and say, okay, Whipping this down onto the H4, what are we looking for? Yeah, well, quite simply, we're looking for where price is delivering from now, right? We've got our green line, meaning that we're looking for price to go higher. We're in our H4, so where can price be delivering from? Order blocks or fair value gaps? My preference is always from fair value gaps. Um, obviously, we favor the clear and obvious. I'm gonna do this one in green again to show that this should be supporting price and driving price higher. So now we've refined this down on the four hour, we can see quite clearly the action that was made up here in this order block, yeah? Price coming up, we've delivered back in here. Price has now created this fair value gap, rebalancing, 
we're now looking for it to deliver higher prices. We can apply the same to the four hour order blocks as well. Just remember that the lower you go on the time frames, yeah, then quite often, you know, or not quite often, there's more noise on the charts. Oh, Kaz, just one of the most beautiful people I've ever known, my dear friend Casimir. It is so wonderful to see you in the chat, brother. Hello from London to my dear friend in Paris. Uh, Kaz was so, so beautifully kind to us when we visited Paris for blockchain last year and just took us to some of the most amazing places, just one of the kindest and just beautiful and smartest souls you could wish to meet. Uh, another master's in the bag for our good friend Kaz recently as well, always always driving us on to try harder. One of those, one of those legends. Very much welcome to the stream, my friend. It's wonderful, wonderful to see you on here. Um, and let me just take a look back at a couple of the other questions because I realise I've covered a lot of material there. So I'm sure we've got a couple of bits and pieces. So Nick, why do you think price action didn't bounce from the FEG inside the grey in the week commencing 18th of the 9th and the recent order block? Um, Nick, smash that back onto the thing for me in a second. Is that the daily we're looking at that on, mate? Is it um, in terms of, of the FEG? Let me know and then I'll ping that on and we will take a little look. And then learning. Have a nice day, buddy. You have a nice day, my friend. It, always great to see you here on the stream. Um, no, all is good as said before. Programs the brain to ensure good behavior and thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, building positive habits. And actually, it's so funny that we've got um, my friend Kaz here on the stream today as well. Also a, a beautiful, brilliant friend of the Nest and, uh, and Mr. Burb himself. Um, it is actually kind of that programming of good habits, building good, um, you know, because the thing is, routines become habitual, bad habits stick, but good habits also stick. Um, but you have to be very, very disciplined with yourself, very, very, very disciplined. Um, and for example, like my friend Kaz here has, you know, very demanding life, very demanding lifestyle, beautiful family, lives in a crazily, you know, um, busy city, works a very intense lifestyle and has found a way amongst all of that. And he's got children, you know, has found a way amongst all of that to go and do a second master's degree. Um, and I talking to him recently, I was just, like, I just don't know how you do it. You know, I see him on there and he's just doing so many things and just does so much with his life, so much positive stuff. And stuff like that should inspire you, right? Should inspire you to be to be better. Um, and I think that's the thing, right? A lot of that stems from building really, really good habits, productive, good habits. So that's what we're doing on here. I'm glad to hear that, Craigie boy. So Nick, let's have a look at this because you raised a good point there. Maybe it's me overthinking things. Right, well, let's have a look. Do you think, why do we think the price action didn't bounce from the FVG um, instead in the week commencing 18th to the 9th? Right, okay. So where are we here? So do, do, do. So we're here, right, okie doke. So, Nick, we're in here, week commencing 18th to the 9th, and we're looking at the daily, yeah? Maybe it's me overthinking on bearish bias. No, 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 not at all, not at all. So were you looking at, are you looking at this fair value gap here, mate? Was that the one? The one we're kind of using this as a balanced price range, right? Our bullish fair value gap coming up. We closed below it, retested it, looking for bearish price action for redelivery down here. I can't see, unless you mean this one. Maybe you mean this one, actually. We commence in the 18th. So let me run over the thoughts on this one just very quickly, just so that we can clear this up. Now, whenever we... So we had this slither of a one here, right? So this should have been bullish. Yeah, if I just zoom in a little bit. We had our gap. We've got our order blocks underneath here, supporting price. Yeah, we had this beautiful close above it. Again, telling us the momentum is with us. Yeah, is with the bulls. Let's just draw that in. So we've got our bullish order block. Yeah, we have this close above the bullish order block, which tells us what? That we're looking for price to chase down higher highs. So we'd be looking up here. Now, the other thing that we'd be aware of is when price does run very hot here and retraces, the close of this. Ah, the weekly one. Sorry, so do you mean as in terms of the big, this big old beastie above us, the kind of weekly and the one that crawls over? Ah, okay, mate. So why did we not bounce from that? Okay, well, I'll finish on this one anyway. This was another really good spot, right? Because this fair value gap here actually told us a lot in terms of flipping bearish, yeah? When we closed below it here, uh, I know you must think I sound like a broken record talking about inverse FVGs. 
um, is that we've closed below here. We left this low untapped, which is really important, meaning the liquidity hasn't been taken there. So when we get a retrace back up into it, gives us a beautiful chance to chase down lower prices. Yeah. Even though at the moment we're bullish based on market structure, little dynamics like this can show us a deeper correction is in play. Right. And then we can look from here. We can say to ourselves, OK, how are we looking with premium and discount? We're down here in premium. This is a great spot to look to go long again. All right. But I see what you mean. So just so I don't overlook your questions. Nico, Marshall, thank you very much, mate. Great to have you on the stream. Um, OK, so why do you think price action didn't bounce from the FVG? Um, in the week coming to the 18th of the 9th. So, didn't bounce from it. So, I mean, it did kind of bounce here, right? So, drew into this. We see, we see the fair value gap as a draw, right? So, like what happened here, price came in, drew, pretty much held the equilibrium, I would imagine, almost perfectly, and then drove down, searching for liquidity lower down, yeah? Then, when we're looking at this, price draws back up, drawing into the fair value gap, yeah? And then we see here, we get a reaction lower down. However, we don't get that stronger reaction, right? We're focusing on day trading. This keeps us bearish. This flips us back bullish, right? So now price is drawing into this. The fact that we haven't had that big sell-off looking for key liquidity, I'd be expecting runs down to here. The recovery of this is uh, bullish, right? And then as we look at the market structure as well, we can see actually what we're doing here is we've set that higher low. We've now set that higher high. And we've had that key structure shift, yeah? And that those on a daily time frame on anything are, are important, but especially when we're looking at BTC. Yeah, well done, Brett. Well done, guys. Welcome, Nico. Great to have you on the stream. Um, so does that does that answer your question there? Because obviously, regarding the week commencing the 18th, which was here, we can see we did have this reaction here. Price comes up into it. We ultimately get that price flushes out lower down but if we're looking and thinking about the dynamics of price delivery then remember we're looking for price to reach for liquidity above an old high or an old low or we're looking for it to rebalance a fair value gap right now we don't have fair value gaps in this run up on the daily yeah so we're referring to our order blocks here to help us out we have this little fair value gap in here that when we close below lets us know we're flushing out prices lower down and then this one when it recovers yeah, to go back up. So Nick, do let me know if I haven't answered your question there. But basically, it's fine. In here, I was looking for bearish setups as well, because we're delivering from a weekly fair value gap. Now, the fact of the matter is, though, I want to see some level of confirmation as to why that uh, why that is actually bearish. Yeah, so I don't just want to be thinking or predicting that we'll have a reaction here. Because like with this one here, a lot of people are saying, and I think they're absolutely right to analyze it this way, price is coming back into the fair value gap here. We need to be, I mean, even in my Bitcoin report yesterday, I said I'm expecting higher prices and I want to see that, but I'm playing intraday longs into this area and I want to see how we react. Now, I've missed that, <laughs> right, because we traded it up on the Sunday evening. However, it still doesn't mean that I am, you know, I'm ready to go crazy bullish here. Yeah. Now, daily, everything is supporting the bullish argument. We're above the bullish order block. We're looking like we're about to set a fair value gap in here, which would provide a brilliant opportunity and target for price to pull down into and then look to move higher. Obviously, only tomorrow once this candle is closed. Um, and then what we're doing is we're just moving down through the time frames, right? So what I'm looking at here is saying, OK, same principles, same high and time frame analysis. Uh, I'm looking for targets to long from. Now, meaning that I don't want to be longing from here. Yeah, we've had this big move up. Price could just completely fly away from here. I've seen a lot of people, especially this morning on Twitter, um, saying, you know, how, you know, be careful, you know, you know, price will just run away from you. Sometimes you don't get these pullbacks. That's fine, but you'll always have consolidations, right? And there's always, the, there's always a point that you can get involved. The issue is, is look how high up we are, right? Do we really want to be longing from up here when our risk, you know, we have to have our stops down here. You know, what we would be saying here on a four hour scale is, okay, well, let's think about this sensibly, right? Let's draw in our four hour fair value gap, which we're doing green again, show that it's bullish. And then we can see down here, you know, we've got the support of this order block, you know, on the lower candles and that as well. I let you make these decisions and kind of study yourself. But if you have two smaller adjoined candles like that, you see that some people join them together. It's something to worth being aware of because that's the drawback there before the big move higher. So that area will have some significance. However, what we can see here is we've got support from this base and we've got a beautiful target here for price to draw back into. Yeah, allowing us to then on the lower time frames look for something like this. 
and then chase down higher prices, okay? Um, the other thing that we can do here as well, obviously, is just kind of look at this this expansion higher here, yeah, from so the last down close candle to where price is here. And let's just, you know, if price does finish here where it is at the moment, if it continues to go higher, we follow it higher until we get the next down close candle. But as soon as price starts to react here, we obviously want to see this drawdown into the bottom 50% of our premium discount range. So that's how we just allow ourselves to kind of take high probability setups, yeah, just by following a set of stringent and controlled rules. But actually, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about today was was actually looking kind of at taking this and then putting it on the lower time frame and, and looking how we can find uh, intraday liquidity, right? So looking at session highs and lows, looking at you know, previous day high, previous day low, previous week high, previous week low. Because I think a lot of people um, are just kind of saying, um, uh, to, to, <laughs> sorry, just reading a comment here from Sambuca. I'm looking all over my house to find what's beeping, but it's on your stream. Oh, is it? Is there something beeping on the stream, guys? I, I can't hear anything this M. <laughs> Must have really been freaking you out there. <laughs> Then Sambuca. Yeah, sorry, mate. I can't hear any beeping this end. Um, but do let me know if there is something, maybe an issue through uh, through the provider. Um, yeah, there is. There is beeping on the stream. Isn't that weird? So I'm the only one that doesn't have the beeping. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. What is it just like? Is it, is it really, really annoying? Because I just, I don't want to end the stream because then I might not be able to get back on it. I wonder if I just, hang on, maybe if I remove myself, because we're going to go on to another, we'll go on to another asset now anyway. I know you. No, there's literally a foghorn in the background. There's no fan, there's no beeping. There shouldn't be anything coming through the microphone, unless the microphone's just a bit duff. Let me try turning off, uh, the mic on and off first, right? Let's see if that works. Anything? Did that stop? Ah, oh, okay, beeps every minute or so. <laughs> It was my heat pump. It's not that bad. All right, we'll, we'll persevere on. If it does get bad, guys, let me know because I can just remove myself from the stream and I'll bring my... In fact, I'll, I'll try that anyway because I know Yusuf is really, really keen for us to um, to dive into... What was it? HTF hash flow. Okay, let me try and find that for you, Yusuf. Let me just disconnect for a second, guys, and I'll come... I'll just remove the chart. Um, and then we will we will add that back. Let's that just see just randomly if that does anything. Uh, <laughs> just thinking that I was losing it. Exactly. Trading views not giving you the prices you want. All of a sudden there's a bleeping sound comes into play. It's all just it's all going downhill. Sounds like the alerts on trading view. Just wanted to hear you know where I was coming from. <laughs> it's been confirmed, the mystery is solved. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I really don't know what it is actually. I don't think it's my trading view alerts, unless they're just somehow triggering in the background of yours, but Hopefully it's not too annoying, guys. If it does get annoying, I can always kind of restart the stream. So just do let me know. Um, right, Yusuf. So what is HTF? I've never traded that before. Uh, do, do, do. I can't see it. Um, it does come with the age, mate. You're absolutely right. You're talking to one hell of a boomer here. Uh, there's no youth being thrown about in this office, I can assure you. Um, so... Yusuf, if you're still here, mate, what is the... Because I can't get anything coming up on, on HTF. <laughs> Thought it was your air container. Do you know what, weirdly as well, we've got some... We've got the big container ships coming down the Thames. Uh, so I live just at the mouth of the estuary here in London. And there's obviously fog going on outside because all I can hear in the background now are fog noises. So you guys are dealing with the bleeping. I've got tankers putting up fog noises in the background. So... <laughs> It's it's a good start to the week. Right, Yusuf, can you find the ticker for that for me, please, my friend? And then let me know and I will, um, I'll come back to that one. But just to finish up on Bitcoin, right? Look, a lot of people I see, especially people that have contacted me after the streams and I get lovely, lovely feedback from you guys and lots of constructive stuff, are saying that, okay, they're, they're kind of getting their head around the principles of how price can move like this, right? And how you can look at these dynamics to look for bias. And the truth of it is, if I really, really simplify it down, we're looking for where price is reaching for, what price has just done, and where it's delivering from, yeah? So in this instance here, we'd wanna be zooming out and saying like, okay, well, where's price reaching for? Well, realistically, okay, we've got these kind of fair value gaps and that in here, but we can't make an allowance for everything. 
Um, yeah, I thought it might be TV alerts as well, mate, but they're not triggering my end. Um, I've got them on mute, but maybe somehow it's coming through the through the stream. So what I'm looking for is this. Yeah, that's my next kind of clear and obvious target, right? Because the people that were short here, right above this high, we've had this massive move down. So for me, it makes uh, what I would classify as a clear and obvious target. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, look, if I'm smart money, if I'm major players, if I'm institutions, you know, I'm going to need an area with liquidity that's so clear and obvious when I want to offload my massive positions, there's going to be enough people to meet the other side. Um, of my bids or my asks, right? So up here, they're wanting to sell back to the market, meaning that they need to find buyers, willing buyers that can buy at a higher price. So there's breakout traders up here that are willing to buy because they're saying, okay, my system is based on the fact that we're breaking out for a number of different reasons, maybe with strength, maybe with a certain fractal pattern, and then we're moving higher. But the other thing is that we have stop losses above here from the people that were short further back here, yeah? Meaning that they then turn into market buy orders, meaning that you can basically have them forcibly bought off of you at market price, which is exactly what you want when you're offloading big positions. That's why at points like this, we very often see these kind of reversals, right? You get these fake outs, you get these deviations as SC so beautifully coins. Um, then you come back below a certain key level and then you're looking for your breakdown patterns in here for price to retrace. So, that's all well and good. And a lot of you are really, really excellent at this now. And I get some brilliant messages. I see some posts from some of you on Twitter and stuff. And I think your analysis is really good. But where people can really, really struggle with this is then asking themselves, okay, well, let's say we do get this move. Price does pull back down into here. How do I then have the conviction to think, okay, well, where does this actually trigger? You know, where can I actually look for these setups? So as we did back here, let's take a look at last Friday. Like I said, I don't really like trading the weekends. Um, but let's take a look at last Friday here and say to ourselves, okay, because basically what we were saying here is the same thing as we're saying up here. A lot of people were kind of skeptical about this move. Yes, we're drawing into a higher time frame, fair value gap. You know, people were kind of saying, look, you know, we're probably going to get a rejection here. Price is going to pull back. Don't worry about making those predictions. Just set the levels of interest and the points of interest you have. And then from there, um, you can make an informed decision. So for example, we highlighted this fair value gap, which is what we're going to look at. Yeah, we're going to drop down onto the lower time frames. I'm going to show you how we can execute that using session liquidity. Okay. So one of the big things is this, until it's closed below. So if this candle, for example, had done this, yeah, and closed below this, then oh, my expectation would be for us to be chasing down lower prices and looking down here. All right. So let me just clear this up quickly. So we've not got loads of random bits highlighted. This is our point of interest. We didn't get this, however. So we've got a bullish bias. Yeah, price is delivering bullish price action. Do we have clear and obvious targets higher up? Look at these beautiful cluster of relative equal highs. So our expectation is price is reaching up for there. Where else would we want to be aware of? Well, we've got these kind of, they're not exactly close enough to be relatively equal, but I would say that's the more clear and obvious of the two. Yeah, why? Because anybody that was short here, we came down, retraced back up into here, and then ultimately sold off a bit lower. So what does that mean? Well, it means that on Friday, when price draws down into this FVG, we need to find a way to go long, right? So I typically execute on the five minute, but I want to take a look at the 15 minute first because it's the lowest time frame that I would be looking for in terms of fair value gaps, in terms of order blocks. Remembering all the time, like I said before, um, ultimately, the lower we drive down the time frames, yeah, then the less weight that we're that, that we put okay on it. So if we've got you know a daily fair value gap, for example, versus a five minute fair value gap, we want to make sure that we're kind of having our focus on what the daily model is doing, what's how is price delivering, and then using the lower time frames to execute. So, quite simply, I'm looking for session liquidity, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is let me get this, if I can highlight that, and let's just get rid of that for a minute, just so we've got a nice clear chart. Now, for those of you that don't know, these down here represent my kill zones for trading sessions. Yeah, that's London, New York AM. Yeah. And then this is the session for our execution, New York PM. 
The only other area of consideration within here when we're looking at liquidity is New York lunch. So let me just mark this on here. All right, which we actually allow an hour and a half for. So these two lines here represent our lunch. So we're looking for the low and the high within that, which is this low. See the low between these two lines, which becomes very significant. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So what we're looking for here, quite simply, and it depends what your executable time frame is on, but I wanted to give you a couple of examples. So I'm going to start on the 15 minute because I think it gives people a little bit more access in terms of looking at doing this with consistency and building a trading system that's also kind of geared around your life, you know, family, work commitments, etc. cetera, um, is daily time frame saying, if we draw down into this fair value gap and we see a bullish reaction, right? Has to be within one of our kill zones, for me anyway, yeah? Then we're looking to deliver higher prices. So what happens here? Well, we get this New York lunch, yeah, which for my time UK is between 1700 and 1830. Yeah, so that's New York time is five hours behind us. All right, um, so then from 12 until 130 for them. So then when we get, it's like the battery indicator beep of a smoke. <laughs> I know. God, it's so annoying. I can't hear it. And I really don't know what it is. I've written a note down here to speak to Cuba, who's our technical guy that does all of this. So let me just emphasize that beep. Like smoke alarm when live. Do any of you guys know, have you, any of you guys noticed this before? It could just be like a little bit, I'm really sorry about it because it's, it's obviously clearly annoying, but I don't know if any of you guys have, I've heard it before on the streams. If you have, let me know, just so I can give it to technical. They'll rip it apart, and then hopefully that'll all be good to go. So before I digress too much, what do I want to see, right? Now, for anybody that's been on the stream before, they know I'm looking for a sweep, yeah, or a raid. So that means a prior low to be taken. I then need to see a market structure shift, yeah, with displacement. So this is our market structure shift. So I'll line it up as our MSS. You'll also see... Uh, ICT and people of that will talk about it as a cho-cho, which is a change of character. See it like these. So if I'm working with ICT students, normally we label it up as that. Uh, I'm just you know, a bit of an old school dinosaur. So for me, it was always a market structure shift. Um, <clears throat> so here's our MSS. And look at this beautiful displacement. Yeah. Look at this. When, when I say displacement, what do I mean? Look at the powerful, strong move above that leaves our fair value gap. Yeah. And that's where we're going to be interested in longing this is from here. In fact, in this particular instance, annoyingly for us, we just kind of missed it here, right? But regardless, um, you're not going to catch every trade. The whole point of the matter is that if we had been tagged in here, all we're doing is being honest to our system. We put our stops a few points below the prior swing low. And then, like we said, we look for our clear and obvious targets. Now, this is what we're targeting up here, remembering, again, Rather than getting distracted by all of this noise, yeah, we've got a clear high time frame target, yeah. HFT, not HTF, sorry, mate, all right. HFT, we'll pop on there in a second, Yusuf. HFT. So 3.75R, lovely. Where would I be aware of now? I'm on the lower time frames. Why would I be saying, okay, well, I'm going to monitor here. I monitor here as price gets up here as well, because there could be stop losses here. It might be the case that we get a reversal, especially if we're actually wrong on our high time frame bias. Yeah. Low batch on a smart alarm or a digital watch. <laughs> I know it's, you're absolutely bang on you, Argo. That's what other people have been saying as well. I just, I can't. I'm just trying to listen to it. I really can't. I'm really sorry, guys. I will try and get it fixed for the next, uh, like, yeah, exactly. Probably a poltergeist in there. Yuri, smoke alarm plus one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like UTC plus one. So <laughs> it's definitely not my calm heartbeat. Uh, Nip, it's uh, I'm definitely a, an up kind of guy. So look, hopefully that makes sense, right? I think if we, you know, we won't let's go into it now. We can see if we press play that this would play out and kind of take these highs. But actually, what I want to do now is just do this again. Um, yeah, I will hear it if I replay. Yeah, I'll certainly be getting our technical team to look into it for sure, guys. So let's go on to a new asset, shall we? And let's just have a rundown of that. So H T, I say H F T. Here we go. Any particular exchange, uh, Yusuf? 
And are you looking at the perpetual contract or the spot? We can kind of adjust ourselves to, to take a look at that either way. Yeah, it's a good idea, actually, guys. I will rewrite it because that is going to really bug me because obviously I would hear it in the office here, right? There's nothing in the office anywhere that's beeping. So there's got to be some weird thing that's going on with maybe it's what we're kind of delivering the stream through. Potentially there's some kind of thing there where there's, a, I don't know, maybe getting a little bit over uh, overloaded with, with video content. Binance, okie doke, here we go. So let's take a look for our friend Yusuf, right? And actually this is a completely new asset to me. So it will be really, really good to just kind of do a nice top down on it. Um, Christ. So that is hugely illiquid, right? Is the problem that we've got. Um, let's zoom out, obviously, the higher time frame that we go on to. Um, then we'll kind of fill some of those gaps. But basically, where you see all this gapping everywhere, it's just price just isn't finding any kind of matching. So someone's trying to buy here, you know, they're actually going to end up getting filled. They end up getting filled kind of further up. Trading view did not enjoy HFT there, did it? Hang on a sec, guys. Just trading view just crashed again. Let's load it back up and get our HFT chart back in. But just while we're doing that, guys, does that make sense to you in terms of how we're looking at price delivery, right? You know, we don't need to make it more complex for ourselves. We can use that. We can use the combination of using fair value gaps, highs and lows. Right. And, you know, basically the idea being that we're looking, you know, from it, from the perspective of liquidity gains, yeah, where the larger accounts are moving the market to in order to get filled and where the, uh, you know, and, and where retail traders typically, but other traders as well are, are looking and obviously getting trapped in the use of that liquidity. I think tether pair is better. OK, mate, let's let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's the ticket, Yusuf. Well done, mate. Right, so let's pop this back on stream. Perfect. All right, Erica, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. So awesome. Let's really dive into this one, guys. Let's use, let's really kind of just apply everything that we've been discussing here. And then let's look at ways that we could have, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, this is, so there's your IPO. Yeah, and there's, Jesus, 7th of November. So it just basically sold off. And then in a week, it lost 98.4% of its value. That is very interesting indeed. So, okay, there's not going to be tons and tons of data on this yet, but there's still going to be plenty of stuff for us to dive into, right? There's still structure here. There's everything that we can look at. So let's focus on recency. If you've got any questions about the... Oh, is the, is the image not up there? Like, literally, it's showing as being shared at the moment. Can you guys confirm that? So I can remove it and, and pop it back on again. Can you guys not see the HFT chart? Yeah, it's back now, is it? Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we'll focus on recency. If anybody's got any questions about it, then please do let me know. and We can look back further as well. So... All we're doing. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate. Right, so here we go. Bang, bang, bang. Boom. Okay. So first thing we're labeling up here is our weekly fair value gap. Why is that important? Because we can see as price was delivering, what was happening here. Price came down, closed below this order block. What did we do? Leave this fair value gap. What did price do? Tweak into this fair value gap here. Just strong reaction. It's continuing to deliver price action in a bearish manner. So what do we look for? We look for targets, yeah? So this here is what I would say a clear and obvious low, right? So as price is coming down, there's an expectation for us to take that. The other thing that I really love here is this, which are our equal lows. Yeah, so see relative equal lows, this low and this low, that is, they are, pr that, or they are prime targets for liquidity rates, okay? Now, what's interesting here is if we're using our order block theory and we make an allowance for this whole order block here, 
This was validated on the close of the last weekly candle when we've closed above here. So the other thing that we want to do is mark up the next key liquidity above us. And what we can see here is price has given us two points of interest here. We have the liquidity resting below the lows here, and we have this liquidity resting above this high, these relative equal highs here as well. So we can see actually in terms of a liquidity perspective, we're going to draw these in as well. Move that up just a smidge to make an allowance for that next one. And now we have our equal highs. Okay, so now on a weekly scale, we all of a sudden start to get the picture. Yeah. Obviously, we will look to refine this in the lower time frames. However, as we can see here, <clears throat> with this move from this order block, as happened here when we set this order block, we got the close below it here. Yeah. Now, we would have been cautious here, right? Because price had this huge run on all this liquidity below here. But ultimately, we've got this clean low over here, right? So as price broke down below this, until we got some reason on this time scale to flip to a bear to a bullish bias, we have to expect bearish price delivery, right? So once we closed under here, fine, the expectation is price is now going lower. So reversing that logic, when we closed above the bearish order block here, yeah, what well, bullish order block, sorry, bearish candle, we're now looking for something like this in theory, right? For this to show us some support, and then for price to chase down higher. So let's drop this now down to our daily and see what the daily is telling us. The daily here looks really nice and bullish. Yeah, we can see our weekly order block. We can see our weekly levels that we've got on here. Um, what could support this theory really nicely? All right, let's just zoom in a little bit. So I think that is in fact, yeah, very, very small bodied, but that is a down close candle here. So in terms of looking at that as a bullish order block as well, we would want to see this hold. So if price held here and on the lower time frames, yeah, again, we get this kind of pattern. We want to see a sweep, recovery, retest, and then for price to be moving higher, right? However, we do also want to be aware of this. So we've got this bullish order block here on a weekly scale that's remained untested. Within that, we can see here that we have a bullish fair value gap, which I'll just do in green again, just so that it highlights it as bullish. So if we then bring in our principles of premium and discount, we can see here, this is looking like forming our down first down close candle since this order block. Well, we wouldn't wanna be going long from here because the risk really isn't in our favor, okay? What we've got is we've got a ready-made target down here in this, price can quite easily draw down into here, yeah, we get our little moves we were discussing. We don't get the close below. And then all of a sudden, this area has held a support for a weekly order block. We've seen the daily fair value gap tapped into a bullish reaction. Lower time frame gives us the opportunity to target higher prices. So what do we do now? We drop this down now to our four hour, right? And we say to ourselves, okay, these lines, by the way, are just session breaks. That just means that we've got... Um, that just means that it just signifies the crossover point per day. So as we look here, right, we can see price has moved up, back down, tried to move higher, and now actually it's looking like it's kind of coming down a little bit lower. So as we turn to our fair value gaps, right, this fair value gap here should have been supporting price. If this four hour, four hour candle closes, which it does in just over five minutes, and let's make the assumption that that happens, we've now created an inverse fair value gap, right? Now, there's nothing to say that price couldn't maybe be having a bit of a deeper correction down into this order block, but we need to respect the state of delivery, yeah? And the state of delivery from here is bearish. So it means there's a bullish fair value gap here and there's bullish order blocks within here, all of which could support price and send it higher. However, if we're respecting our system here, what we're saying is, okay, well, if we do get this close below here, then there's expectation that price is kind of drawing lower. Maybe it's that fair value gap, maybe it's the order block, but for me, I like to target clean liquidity resting below old lows or above old highs, yeah? Why? Because we've swept liquidity here, we've cleaned out this high, we've now broken down, we've inversed a bullish fair value gap, meaning that this is now bearish, we expect this to act as resistance, meaning that if price is now looking for buyers at a lower price, the most obvious place to find them would be below here because that's where the volume of them will exist. Like we said earlier, think about it as this big cluster down here Right, that's the obvious place where where you know you would want to drive price if you wanted to offload large positions. 
So that's basically as we sit here on the four hour, you'll notice I'm not paying as much weight and attention to this, right? Even though we are bullish, right? We're bullish on a high time frame. However, the fact that we're kind of dipping into this at the moment, not really getting that much of a strong reaction means that I'm considering price delivering lower. So if we make an allowance for that, then we know what we need to look for. If ultimately price recovers and gets back above this, then that's bullish for me. So then I can start targeting the highs. Yeah, I'm not trying to enforce my principles um, on the charts. I'm just trying to find the key levels here and then waiting and watching for how price reacts. Yeah. So if we now drop down and say, to, let's take a look at our hourly chart and we can see if we can get any more information here. We can see on the hourly, obviously, because it's a lower time frame, we got, you know, an idea about the breakdown. Uh, a bit sooner because we came into this, right? We retraced here, we failed to get above this high, so we've set a lower high. Price has then dropped down, we've set a lower low, so we've had a change in structure. We've then formed this bearish fair value gap, which we're just doing red. Why red? Look, we didn't get a close above it, right? So remember what I was saying, if we closed above it and then we inversed it, we'd be looking for higher prices, but ultimately what we're doing is we are delivering from a bearish fair value gap. So we have to have a bearish bias. So on the higher time frame, remember when we've zoomed right out, we've said this looks like a really clear and obvious place for liquidity to be resting. So if that's the case, then maybe we're looking for a correction deeper. Now, when we're ever counter trade, counter trend trading, it can make sense to reduce your position size. But I'm not gonna tell you what to do. It's totally up to you and your research. Um, what I do personally is if I'm counter trend trading, I'll maybe drop my position size by 50%. So rather than 2% of my account, I'll do 1%. It just means that I'm making an appreciation for the fact that I'm taking a slightly lower probability on the trade. However, the analysis and the trigger mechanisms will all obviously have to point to it. They are mandatory. I have to meet that criteria to enter. But if my high time frame is telling me I'm bullish, but my medium and lower time frames are telling me to look for bearish trades down to liquidity lower, then this is what I'm doing. I'm respecting where price is delivering from. Delivered from this bearish fair value gap, where to? Here, the clear and obvious low, right? I don't think we can argue with that. Just do that as a little dotted line to show that that's been run out. So see, price came up, bearish delivery from bearish fair value gap. Within our London AM session, price has now run liquidity lower. We've now formed this bearish fair value gap. So for me, the obvious kind of setup here is we can see price interacting with it here is looking for something like this. Yeah, price has drawn up into this now. I think actually it's not quite done it. No, high on that one is 0 0.3431, 0 0.3430. Okay, so not far, but hasn't quite pulled back up into this yet. So what we could look for here are a couple of things. I'm going to drop you down onto a five minute chart quickly and just show you how I would kind of think about this. So I actually want to see price draw higher here. And I'd like to see that as we're kind of heading into our New York session. Yeah, which obviously hasn't printed yet, but from half past one, I'll just put a line on here, which is here. What would be an ideal situation for me is following in line with this would be to see price kind of meander a little bit higher like this, take some liquidity at the highs, break down, yeah, and then look to get back on board with this. Right, so I'm just going to delete this one. Now, why this kind of move? Because this shows that we've swept liquidity, yeah, which would have happened here. We then within this also, as we can see, here's a big five minute fair value gap here, which kind of overlays this four hour one. So our state of delivery is bearish because we're delivering from a bearish fair value gap. What are we looking for? We're looking for a sweep to show that the stops have been engaged. We then look for a reversal of that. We then look for our market structure shift, which is here because higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. We're now delivering a lower low, right? Then when we look to drop off from here, we're looking for a fair value gap in here in premium discount, right? And that's where we'd ultimately be looking to then trade this down into these lows down here, first of all. No, oh, thank you, Gravy Boy. It's been great to see you as always, mate. Have a fantastic working week. Um, and I'll see you on Wednesday, mate. Thanks for always stopping by. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's what I'm looking for. This is what I'd be looking for here today um, on HFT. And just before we close off, something that I just wanted to cover over here as well is that, and let me just go back to our last trading day. Let's just go back to Friday very quickly. Here we go. So Friday, when we're looking for higher prices, 
We can see here, remember, we're above this order block now, right? This was the key thing for us. And look at this. Price comes in, held here for ages. Obviously, this is tons of data because we're on a five-minute chart and we were looking at this on a daily. But ultimately, we're now looking for price to deliver from liquidity, yeah? So if I just mark up, I'm going to mark these, right, just so you can have a visual representation of the kill zones. Okay, so it's just a way to refine our thinking down into these boxes, yeah? Now, my focus is mostly on the New York session. I do, I'm a lot more active um, in uh, Forex for the London sessions, right? But I won't really go into that now. And this quite, kind of quite crypto focused um, on our Mondays. So between this line and this line, which lines up with this, these yellow dots here, um, and then here and here as well. <laughs> I will have to let you know on Twitter. Yeah, I'm going to speak to QBS about that afterwards and see if we can find out what it was because uh, it's really bugging me as well. It's a complete mystery because it's silent as the grave back here. Um, so let's remember what we said before I mark it up just to show you there's no cherry picking here. Our bias has been determined from our high time frame chart, right? That means that we are simply looking for some kind of liquidity trigger mechanism, yeah, that allows us to then step in and say, okay, liquidity has been engaged from either a prior day high, a prior day low, prior week high, prior week low, yeah? And that we're delivering, as we are here, from a bullish um, order block or fair value gap, right? So we've drawn into this, we're now in a point of delivery, we're now using our kill zones to highlight the, the areas that we want to get involved, right? So New York AM session, what do I want to see? I want to see this. I want to see price drawing down and taking liquidity. Right. So what liquidity have we taken? Fine, we've taken this old low, but sometimes that's just not enough. Right. What you want to think is where's the real liquidity building? Yeah. And the real liquidity are building inside sessions. Right. So if we use our London session here, I'm going to draw a box from the low to the high of that session. That's our London liquidity. Right. And let's think about this as a range. Right. And because we're thinking about it as a range, let's do it in bright green. Yeah, because what we want to see with this range is we want to see this range sweep the low, right? So look, where are we? New York AM. Where's our liquidity run? Here. The London session low. Right, so you can mark this up on your chart as well. I've just got it on here as London low, just to show that it's the London low. What else do we then want to see? Remember what I said before, right? We've got this kind of very small... I mean, it doesn't really matter because you can see even if you were to make an allowance for this high, whether you're using regular highs, fractal highs, for example. For me, I just need to define a high. It just needs to have two lower highs flanking it. To define a low, it needs to have two higher lows, right? Just keep it really simple. But either way you're allowing for, it's clear and obvious here that we have a strong move higher. And remember, like I said before as well, with displacement, right? It leaves our fair value gap here. So... Even though we don't trigger in that setup, we get the session, we get the area to monitor. What happens? We come back in, we actually trigger it. We're live here in New York PM session. So our we would actually have triggered here. Stops below this low. And then what we're doing is we're then looking left, right, for clear and obvious targets that we can trade this to. If you don't have clear and obvious targets, right, then what you can do is you can take your Fibonacci extension, which I've got here, but you can find it up on your toolbar over here, trend-based Fib extension. Um, and then what you want to do is take the low to the high, and then down to the low at which point price was executed. So we had that right here, didn't we, right? So when price executed here, our kind of minimal expectation is for us to go to the 1.618 and our ideal is the 2.618. And look how it just literally, to the dollar, took that out, all right? Now, this isn't something I use tons and tons. I much prefer to zoom out and find a clean target based on prior swing highs and prior swing lows, right? But if you need to use it, um, definitely look up some videos on Fibonacci extensions. They're really, really useful. Um, and also, they're very often programmed into bots, algorithms, bits and pieces like that. So you can understand why price has that method. So 
what I'd suggest if, if you're struggling with looking at what point, because the reason I brought this up is because some people would say to me, okay, I'm bullish here because price has taken off from this order block, right? And then I'm looking for price to sweep a low, right? So we've got to here, they're looking for any old low and they're like, right, okay, price has swept that low, yeah? Price has now broken this high and all of a sudden I went long, but then I got stopped out here because price dipped back down. Well, if you refine where you're looking for your liquidity on and you want to look for clear and obvious, then sessions provide really, really good liquidity, right? So as we're looking ahead for this, and we're saying to ourselves, okay, are we going to get this kind of reaction here? We can then zoom back into the charts again and say to ourselves, okay, well, what could be the catalyst behind this, right? So London high, London low. And when we look at this, we're saying to ourselves, okay, well, where was the London high and where was the London low? So if we draw our lines on, yeah, and we're going to put a little indicator on here as well, which is called previous week high and low. You can just find it on, um, on trading view and previous day high and low and a pop on them. The pink one is the previous week and the blue, which we can see all the way down here and all the way up here are the previous day. So price is nowhere near either of those, right? So what we want to do is we can then refer to our London session for which that was the high. And actually this here was the low. So at the moment we can see we've run the lows of that and we haven't really had that reaction. Now we marked up this swing low before, which we can see is engaging with price. But for me, it's just not clear and obvious enough at the moment. So my expectation now is that we're moving forward into the New York session. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to just be taking trades in the middle of nowhere. If we draw back up into this, yeah, and I get a good trigger here within a four hour fair value gap, I can look to go short, right? If we just start to drop from here, fine, the analysis was correct in terms of the fact we think we're getting lower prices, but we just didn't get a chance to get involved in it. We have to make sure that we're hitting our triggers and that we're looking for the right mechanisms to get involved. Otherwise, we're basically just kind of gambling with this and just punting on price, all right? So key areas to look for here, monitoring our sessions, yeah, London high and low, right? Obviously, we ran the low here, but again, we're not expecting higher price at this moment. We expect price to draw up into here and then deliver bearish price action. So we would want to see session highs taken. So let's say, for example, that we're in here, New York kind of plays out or our New York um, uh, AM session plays out. And let's just say, for example, New York AM session kind of comes through to something like this. Yeah. And we're stepping into New York PM. Well, if we get something like that. Yeah. And then that's in the New York PM session. We run the top of New York AM's range then have that breakdown with displacement that can tell us that the stops have been engaged above the highs. Yeah. So above the previous range and then it goes down. No. So my uh, kill zone indicator, my friend is, has actually been made for me by a gentleman called Dr. Fuse. I think he still makes them and sells them. It's not particularly expensive. I think it's like 60 or 70 bucks for the lifetime. I really like it because it's very unobtrusive it allows me to, I have no affiliation with him, by the way, so there's no commissions or anything like that. It allows me to program in when I want my AM sessions. I use my, rather than having the lunch hour in there, I split that between my AM and PM sessions and then use the AM as London and then New York AM and New York PM. They're the key ones that I'm interested in um, and I find them really useful. But actually, something else you guys can use that um, I found recently that I found really helpful is this indicator called Asian Session Range, right? Now, what it does is it very, very beautifully highlights the key liquidity ranges. Now, this does it based on entire session ranges, right? I actually look to refine these down to ICT kill zones. Yeah, that's the way that I trade it. But, and they'll also only show up on your uh, charts in the daytime, of course. So, what we can see here is if I get rid of my... London session here, what we can see is that we get, see this is our London session low, see it's highlighted this box, so we take the low of the box as it suggests, and then we need to see the stops engaged, we get it here, but ultimately it happens before, yeah, our New York session, and we don't get that structure break with displacement, what it does then tell us is we then get our secondary sweep of the low here, Within our New York session, we get our expansion and price comes in. 
what it can be as you refine it down and obviously test, test, test it. When you're going through the charts using these, it's quite handy to see how price is reacting around these different ranges. So for example, right, in this one day alone, we could have had just without even looking at a high time frame bias, we can see here that lows of session here were taken. So that's Asia. So we sweep Asia lows, we change character. Yeah, our market structure shift, we get in a beautiful long trade here. Yeah, all within our London session. Now we step into New York AM. Well, what have we got here? Well, we've run the New York, so we've run the Asia session highs. Yeah, we could also then look back to here and say, okay, have we taken the prior days higher? Yeah, we have. We've taken the prior days higher here. So now we've got two really solid bits of liquidity information saying, well, look, if we get a breakdown here, yeah, then this is something that we can look to trade. And this initial move here didn't take out a low. Right, let me just zoom in a little bit for you. This initial move didn't take out a low, right? Price comes back up, yeah, comes into where this bearish fair value gap. So again, remember, we're asking ourselves, where's price delivering from? Price is delivering from here, this bearish fair value gap. Then what are we looking for? We're looking for a move lower with displacement. Do we get it? We do. The displacement gives us our little key of the trigger mechanism. So we're in here. We get tagged into our trade here, our stops above here or above here at worst. And then we're just looking for it to trade down and take out liquidity of the lows. We'd be monitoring this low, this low, this low, this low, and ultimately this. Yeah, we do get a reversal here, but at the same time, We'd need to look at that within our bias, but even still, imagine if we triggered in here, worst case scenario, we had our stops above here, a few points, and then we were ultimately looking for this low, but we didn't get it. We would have had a couple of opportunities at this low here, which was at 1.42, could have moved our stops to entry. We could have started to trim some profit here at these equal lows, right at 1.87. And then, you know, you're not making tons of money off this trade, but it's risk-free and it reverses on you. It gives you time to get in and out. The one last thing that I'll show on that, so we've got one trade there, two trades here, both of them winners. It's not always going to be the case, obviously. But then as we step into this session here, what have we done? Well, we've taken out New York AM liquidity, right? So New York AM sessions here. This is the low of New York AM. So you could do that and then you could just write something like this, New York AM L, yeah, or dash L, New York AM low. What do we do? We get the sweep, beautiful. Are we within a kill zone? Yes, we're in our New York PM kill zone. Sweep, break with displacement. Do we get a fair value gap to enter? We absolutely do. There's the entry. You'd be in here, you would have your stops under underneath here. Always go a few points below in my opinion. And then you're targeting ultimately these highs. Right, a nice 3.4 trade. Price comes in here. This would have been your first point of interest at which you maybe look to get your stops flat. You can see we don't really have any issue with price retracing there. And that's how you can get into multiple sessions. You know, I always like to overlay a high time frame um, bias because I find it really, really helpful. Um, but even if you haven't got one or if price is really just chopping around, looking for these kind of fractal signatures and looking for liquidity that we can get. Because look, we went short here on the basis that we ran this session's higher. Yeah, London's higher and Asia's higher. And at this point, we hadn't had a breakdown until we get to here. We break down here. We trade it lower. Why? Because we've taken lots of key liquidity above here. It's a natural place for people to sell their positions or certainly to take some profit. So we can assume by being such low time frame players that we can get a nice piece of this action. Yeah. Down here, why are we interesting? Well, we've swept Asia's low and also the prior day's low. So all those stop losses for people that were long yesterday are down here. So market makers can just love to force the price down into here because then the big players can get involved, gobble up all those positions, boom up to here, bounces the market back down to here, uses the liquidity below New York AM low, right? And I think actually if we stick a fib on this, we would see this, you know, being towards a golden pocket entry probably, I would think. So again, clear and obvious. Yeah, golden pockets here. So a lot of people thinking we're going to get a bullish reaction here. Price drives just a little bit lower to take them out and then ultimately gets the recovery that we're looking for. So the one thing I would say, and by the way, guys, that is called just Asia session high. It adjusts it automatically for your time zone as well. Asia session range, sorry. So have a play about with that. If you're really struggling to find your entries, because like today, you know, or any days, you know, you go back to anyone and you say, okay, what are we doing here? Are we bullish or are we bearish? Well, let's have a look at the session liquidity, see what that tells us.
what happens here? Asia's liquidity. Yeah, so see, this is Asia's high. Asia's high gets taken. What do we do? We break down here with displacement. Yeah, what are we executing in our London session? What are we chasing down? Asia's low. Yeah, here, what have we got? Price comes down. What does it do? Cleans out London, cleans out Asia, takes tons of liquidity. What do we get? We get the reaction here in New York. Price ultimately takes out, unfortunately executes just outside of our session, which is thankful because it probably would have just come back and taken us out. But you get the point. You can look at that and you can look at liquidity, which can really help you then hone in um, on trade setups. So look, I hope this has been useful. Really looking to kind of draw out on this a little bit more um, throughout the week as well. So do let me know. On Wednesday, we're going to do our alt request Wednesday. We're going to cover equities as well. So let's take a look at where we are. And um, just to finish up the point on Bitcoin, I would just say, in situations like this, for me, it's about just showing a bit of caution. Yes, this thing could absolutely just moon. We all know that Bitcoin can do that, right? It's just absolutely got it in at any time that it wants to. However, um, we also want to be smart and realize that prices run pretty, pretty hot at the moment, right? So we certainly don't want to be FOMOing into any positions, all right? So if you're in any doubt, use the time that you have wisely. Make sure you're using it to educate yourself. Go back over your own charts. Make sure you're brushing up on your journaling so that you can just really see um, your progress and see the things that you're struggling with, see the things that you're doing well. And then from there, you can really start to kind of focus on the areas that you need to improve. Um, and beyond that, it's just a lot of hard work and a lot of execution. All right. But as always, it's been a pleasure to be here with you on a Monday. I'm going to look forward now to the New York AM session. Um, have a wonderful week ahead. It's been a really, really packed stream today. So it's been awesome for you. I hope you've all found it useful. Let's pick back up on Wednesday. If you've got any alt requests, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Remember, you can find free trials to the Bird Nest, who I work for. Um, I lead a wonderful team of traders over there. Um, and we've got some interesting stats coming out this month. So now we're completely transparent about all of our calls we deliver as a team. So the team delivers calls every single day or pretty much and we average about between 40 to 50 a month um and we're now releasing statistics showing that if you had a ten thousand dollar account or a thousand dollar account how much money you'd be making last month um you would have been up around about 16 percent. so that would have been about sixteen hundred dollars on a ten thousand dollar account obviously 160 dollars on a thousand dollar account and the month before was about double or triple that as well. So really looking forward to getting that information out to you guys. If you've got any questions about it when you see it, please don't hesitate to, rip, uh, to reach out. And you can also come and find me on Twitter under BC underscore Richfield. All right, guys. Look, I'm going to say a few thank yous because there were some really, really great to see some new faces on here. And obviously, I absolutely love all of you guys and some of our old real stalwarts here as well who just, you know, really have kept this stream alive through the times that I've been doing it. So thank you so much. Actually, in about, I think in about a month, I think it's potentially my two year, two year anniversary at the nest, maybe. Yeah, I think so. So I might do something cool for that as well. Thanks, beep. God, yeah, no, hang on. Right, post it note. That's how old I am. Beep for Cuba. Well done. Right, Zambuka77, always a pleasure, mate. Uh, Kelly Barker, lovely Kelly Barker. Enjoy New Zealand for us all. Hope you're loving life over there. Rob James, lovely to see you on the stream today. Thank you so much for your comments. Bobby Varzi as well. You exactly the same. I love the Erica H. Craigie Boy, who slipped back off to work. Wax Shah who's a legend around the nest. Yusuf, absolutely good to see you on here, mate. I'm glad we actually managed to get into HFT as well for you as well. Nit Par, our lovely friend Nit, who always makes the streams as well. Yago, great to see you back on here as well today, mate. Yuri, thanks very much for dropping by. Hans, our man from South Africa. Um, since 81, thank you for the comments, mate. I will definitely be looking at that. I think you set the tone for saying it sounded like a smoke alarm. Hopefully, I'll have that fixed by the next one as well. And hopefully, I haven't met out anyone else. Ah, okay. Nico Marshall, good to see you on here as well, mate. Piscuit, always good to see you there, bud. Kazmar, I mean, that just... Just made my day to see you on there, Kaz, um, as well as everyone else, but just really, really beautiful to see you on there. Such a, just a wonderful person. Harvin as well. Thank you very much for your contributions. That was incredibly funny. Um, and I think Nico, I maybe already mentioned learning. That's another one. Saw you on here as well, mate. Mano, my good friend and magnificent student, Mano, who's coming on leaps and bounds. Soul as well. Thank you for your comments earlier, mate. And I think we have made it through everyone. What a delight to have so many of you on the stream. Please don't hesitate to reach out, guys. Um, and let's keep our eyes on the chart 
and show a little bit of caution towards Bitcoin today. But let's hope that this is the start of what is technically a month called Uptober. So I will share, or if you haven't seen it, please do go and check out the Armanac Trader Report as well. This is such a big day for crypto. Um, Adrian Crypto Burb, dear friend of mine who I work alongside at The Nest, was asked by the Stock Traders Armanac to do a seasonality report. I joined with them on Bitcoin. This is something that transformed the stock market trading years ago and actually has been done for the last 40 plus years. Uh, Jeff Hirsch, who runs it, is linked in uh, on my Twitter as well. Please do go and check it out. It's completely free. It shows the seasonality studies of Bitcoin. Again, while this isn't a standalone in indicator, it does show you how prosperous this can be as a month after coming off the back of what is typically a very low month last month as well. Just a dad, my man, a nemesis. I'm sorry if I missed you guys along the thing. I've just seen your comments there. Our lovely brawl as well, sitting there, all gorgeous in the background. Nick, you're very welcome, mate. Cheeky vacation, hey, just a dad. Good month. Oh, wonderful. You beauty. All right, mate. Well, it's all there. And Tammy F sat there in the background. I didn't know you were here either as well. Thanks so much, guys. Lovely to see all of you. Um, and let's get back on it Wednesday. Let's see what we do. Let's take a look at this analysis. Remember, if you've got some curiosity for it, look at your session highs and lows, previous day highs and lows, and previous week's highs and lows as really key areas that you can look for liquidity-based reactions to execute on the lower time frames. All right, guys. Lots of love to you all. Cannot wait to see you on Wednesday. Trade safe, be safe, and be good to one another.